Ed. Kirby. Hey, great to see you. Thanks for having me. Nice to see you again. Thanks for coming. So, wow, this is... um, this is the first cutting room to be opened by a Savile Row tailor uh, outside of uh, London. This is unbelievable. Absolutely. Uh, this was something that's been in the planning stages for some time. And Huntsman knew that because of our presence in the United States and the importance of this market, that the next step to take was to actually open up a completely vertical operation where we have a fully functional cutting theater and offer the full range of cutting services in New York. Uh, So we've chosen this building, which uh, has historic significance in New York. So there's a great parallel to Savile Row. Uh, This building was built in 1907, and it was an artist's studio. Uh, And this particular uh, studio has actually been the home to several notable people, among which were um, Jose Ferrer, Woody Allen's movie studio, and Tony and Danny Bennett's music production studio and I have a Christmas card to Tony Bennett to prove that he actually wow. lived here. So I mean Huntsman of course like most of the Savile Road tailors you know has been traveling twice a year to the United States for, for decades. You know what really led to you know the idea of actually uh, you know formalizing the relationship with the United States even more to opening up its own dedicated cutting room and premise to serving US clientele. Well, Kirby, interestingly, we still, we still travel to markets where we've been able to expand our presence in the United States by having an in-situ cutting uh, theater and a resident cutter. So you'll meet Ralph Fitzgerald, who is our Huntsman-trained, London-born cutter who lives in New York City. And the advantage to clients is that they no longer have to wait for that repetition of the trunk show. So if someone uh, comes, sees a, sees a client, or one of the cutters sees a client in Chicago, they didn't have to wait three months or four months for the cutter to come back through. Here we have the triangulation of Chicago or Boston, New York, and London. So it's a great opportunity for a client. And really, the difference is that in London, somebody comes in and the suit is cut on the main floor and is walked down to the sewing shop in the basement. Here. We do the same thing and it's rolled up and sent in a box by courier to London. So we're using, you know, modern conveyance to basically enhance a 300 year old craft. Yeah. And, you know, one of the, um, you know, I always say that, you know, one of the most uh, meaningful aspects of bespoke, you know, really what gives the garment its integrity and meaning is the relationship someone has with their cutter. Uh, I mean, it's a relationship that uh, is, uh, you know, functionally very important because you want the person that's cutting the garment to be the one that's taking your measurements and doing the fittings. Uh, But there's also a a much more personal aspect where you develop a relationship with your cutter, you know, over years or decades as one's relationship with a firm like Huntsman grows. So, you know, I guess, you know, you guys having a full-time cutter you know, based here in New York that's dedicated to serving your U.S. clientele, you know, just allows that experience, uh, normally only experienced at that level and frequency in London, to be also experienced here in New York? Absolutely. It's the most important aspect of why we're doing this. That relationship sometimes over the years borders on being sacred, but it is as, it is as important as a client's relationship with his, his doctor, his lawyer, or his dentist. And once you have a cutter, uh, and that relationship is forged, you stay with that cutter for life. And as Ralph will also explain to you later, the sewing team that's assigned to a client's garment, the intention is to keep that sewing team in London intact so the same people are actually making a client's garment year after year after year. Yeah, that's incredible. So the, the significance of Huntsman having a full-time US-based cutter uh, and presence here in New York really can't be overstated. I mean, you know, Huntsman is the first Savile Row tailoring house, you know, to open a proper U.S. cutting room with a dedicated uh, a staff here. So it's a big deal. It's amazing. It affords incredible flexibility uh, as we service clients and offers a, a level of execution that no one else can bring to the marketplace. And there are situations where. Uh, If a cutter was coming here on a trunk show and had an international flight that was leaving at 4 o'clock in the afternoon and a client who had an appointment at 1 said, I can't come at 1, can I come at 3.30? It's not possible. In this case, it's absolutely possible. We've taken appointments as early as 6.45 a.m. 
and as late as nine o'clock at night yeah. when but it was when it was something that was absolutely required to accommodate a client's yeah. schedule. So Ed, I mean, so for someone that's not completely familiar with Huntsman, uh, you know, I mean, the firm has been around for 175 years. You know, help me understand kind of where Huntsman fits in the picture of, or the context of Savile Row Bespoke Tailoring. Well, as you mentioned, Kirby, Huntsman was founded in 1849, and as we say today, uh, contemporary since 1849. So that has great significance because while we are one of the most important legacy houses on the row, um, we, our history, which comes from our equestrian heritage, has enabled us over the years to develop, uh, refine, and define one of the three most iconic silhouettes in all of menswear. The Huntsman coat, the Chiffinelli coat, and the Anderson and Shepard coat. Those are three coats that a gentleman will can see, spot, and recognize walking down the street. So that's great. That's of great significance. But taking that, that's part of what gives us our, our authenticity and our provenance. And that's now enabled us to take bespoke in, into its next level. Yeah. So uh, bespoke in hyperdrive is represented by the many commissions that we've taken from formal wear to the driving suit that was done for Mark Newson, uh, to bespoke linings that were done uh, using paintings from Ed Ruscha, uh, to every manner of commission for sporting, for hunting, for shooting. In fact, we are, for a client in Houston, we are making a new commission off of a Solbiati cotton whipcord in a safari suit. Wow. So think of our history with safari. Mm -hmm. Huntsman was the company that made Clark Gable's garments in the famous movie Magumba. This is the 2018 version for a client in Houston who's not going to be wearing this on safari. This is going to be his casual wear. So we collaborated on this and we conceived this commission as something which he thought would be fantastic because he'll be the first person to have a garment that's made to look like this. That's unbelievable. So, I mean, it's, I think it's so exciting and so important. I mean, you know, you see a lot of the British heritage, uh, you know, companies kind of falling in the trap of almost, you know, getting stuck in their history in the past and not innovating and not doing anything differently and at some point they find themselves irrelevant. You know, but Huntsman is, you know, especially with, the, with Pierre, you know, have been, has been able to kind of make that transition from, you know, one of the oldest, most prominent bespoke tailoring houses of Savile Row, you know, to a firm that today is just as exciting and just as relevant maybe as it was in the 1950s and 60s. It's very easy to become a caricature of yourself. So you have to be respectful and you have to be relevant. In, in the same breath. And if you even look at the way Huntsman fabrics are developed, uh, they really cover that span from A to Z. So from this house bunch, you'll see one of our iconic tweeds made in Isla, and this mill has been in existence for nearly 500 years in Inner Hebrides, and you'll see that our chairs are covered in the same fabric. So this was a fabric that was developed uh, derivatively off of a favorite coat that belonged to Gregory Peck, one of our most famous historic clients, um, and it's gone from there to what I just showed you here today to a cloth like this, which is the, the Red Deer. And the Red Deer was first taken to New Zealand, I think 1852 or 1853, and the Red Deer produces a fleece which has the fineness of Viconia, uh, but is something which is very unique to the marketplace. So Huntsman is able to offer the most traditional and offer the most technically innovative fibers in the world, it, all in the same vein. Yeah, incredible. So are the Huntsman clients, you know, these days, I mean, of course, you're still doing city suits, uh, you know, you're doing, you know, dinner suits and, uh, you know, morning dress, you know, but I, I would imagine that most Huntsman clients are commissioning a tweed also. Kirby, it, it's absolutely true, but it's really, it's, it's across the board. Um, it's as diverse as the individual's lifestyle. I think the most important thing that defines a huntsman or a huntswoman, it's a person who embraces the lifestyle of huntsmen. And that lifestyle is defined by certain pursuits and attributes which include a sporting heritage, appreciation of the finer things in life, whether it's whiskey or wristwatches. Uh, fine, fine cars, but people who have an appreciation for handcraftsmanship, 
for things that have historic relevance, uh, but that work in a practical environment. I think these are part of what define the huntsman and the huntswoman. So actually living in the garments, you know, versus, you know, just wearing them. Yeah, these garments are meant to be worn and to last a lifetime, and we have many examples of garments, uh, including one that was brought back to us by the Earl of Cawdor that was made in 1926. And it's still being worn, it's not hung in a closet. He brought it in to have the buttons changed. That's crazy. In fact, when we take our tour, we're gonna to see a garment that uh, Colin Hammock made for Gregory Peck in 1960, and that very cashmere is still, de still being produced by Johnsons of Elgin and, and sold today. So something which has very specific provenance is totally relevant for the year 2018. And some of our youngest and hippest clients are buying this jacket, not to wear with gray flannels, but to wear with custom or bespoke made jeans. So Kirby, just going back to our equestrian heritage, uh, when we look through the annals, we find that in the 1920s and 30s, Huntsman was, as it is today, as important for ladies as it is for, for gentlemen. So we have quite a following among female clients who have embraced historically and contemporarily today the classic uh, equestrian silhouette. Uh, it's completely appropriate and you know, we dressed uh, from the entourage of Queen Victoria to Catherine Hepburn to today, uh, everyone from Helen Mirren to Lauren Hutton to uh, Nicole Kidman. There in fact is a tweed which is known uh, euphemistically as the Nicole Kidman tweed. Is that right? And it is a completely contemporary hip garment. Uh, Daisy Natchbull, who was our uh, communications director, was the first person to commission a morning suit for Ascot. And interestingly, one of our clients in Pittsburgh, uh, his wife is a new Hunts woman, and the first garment she commissioned was, I want Daisy's morning suit because she runs the largest charity in the city of Pittsburgh and next year when they have their lunch she intends to wear that outfit with a proper top hat. So what are we looking at here? Well in terms of our history this is one of the most traditional fabrics at 695 grams per meter. In a, it certainly is. Uh, but that's, that's the traditional red twill used for a hunt coat. And one of our clients... Fox hunting. Right? Yes, and one of our clients in New York uh, decided to have this made as a gift and commission this for a friend of his, a female, in London. And we made this coat in London and it created quite a stir. Uh, and he himself is uh, currently, well pr prior to this commission was not a Huntsman client, but he called me up and said, I have to have the identical one myself. So we're now making him one and that'll be his first Huntsman garment, hopefully the, the first of, of many more to come. So Kirby, as we were speaking, here is a, an example of a vintage hunt coat, also known as a hunt pink, from the term uh, in the pink, meaning you're in good hunting form. So this represents that, that great, fantastic, heavy fabrication done in the most traditional cut. And you can see the flare of the skirt, which is done on purposefully so that it's, it's comfortable when, when you're on, on your horse. And just look at the level of detail in the vent with the leather trim on wow. both sides of the vent. This is absolutely a work of art and is made the same way today as it was then. So this is the type of kind of historic garment that, you know, again, you would only be able to find from a firm like Huntsman that actually has the provenance uh, and, and history of, of making these. Absolutely, and here you see an example of an actual English saddle which was used in the fitting. And this is a photograph from the fitting room in London uh, actually showing garments that were in, in, in a state of make-based fit garments uh, being made for this. So you would, you would put on the jacket and then sit on the saddle and you know, what, were they, you know, what were they paying attention to? Well basically it has to fit you while you're, while you're riding your horse. Mm -hmm. So it's not a garment that's meant to be worn standing up, it's meant to be worn in the saddle. So the shape of the waist, all of the elements of the hunt coat, the high armhole, the longer coat, these are all the pieces that move forward into streetwear. Um, and they were developed on the saddle for the hunt. Yeah. So you'll see that in some of the uh, photographs that we have that show Colin Hammock fitting a garment with the client sitting 
on the saddle, both for the coat and, and for the bottom as well. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, again, this equestrian tradition is part of kind of what evolved into the huntsman aesthetic because, you know, the traditional huntsman jacket is slightly lo longer with higher arms hole and, you know, higher vents because traditionally that's what one would see in their hunt coat. Absolutely. Uh, so that is, it's part of our legacy. And if we talk about, again, the history of the cutter and the cutter being the keeper of the flame, so to speak, for the various houses at Huntsman, it is most important because today, Ralph is the direct descendant of Colin Hammock, who's probably the most recognizable cutter of the 20th century at Huntsman. So as I was mentioning, here's a, an actual photograph of Colin Hammock in the fitting room in London, and he's actually pinning the shoulder without the sleeve on for a hunt coat, and you can see the flare of the skirt, because this is all about you know, being comfortable uh, and fitting. It has to fit snugly while you're on the horse, also, it's of the time, so we talk about Huntsman being contemporary. Look at the width of the bottom on those trousers. They do have a flare. Yeah, so wow. it's very interesting to look at a little slice of history from um, the third quarter of, of the 20th century. So Kirby, while we're here, let me show you a few historic garments and some of our silhouettes that are inspiration for us when we, when we meet with our clients. Great, yeah. So one last reference to historic garments. This is a jacket that was made by Colin Hammock in 1960 for Gregory Peck. That's uh, Mr. Peck's actual jacket. And that tweed, which was produced by Johnson's of Elgin, which was founded in 1797, is produced for us today. And we sell that exact cashmere tweed uh, to clients. In fact, some of our youngest clients own that coat because they're wearing it with, with jeans. Uh, absolutely fantastic uh, contemporary twist on, on, on Huntsman's history. So inside this garment, which we'll show you later, in the right in-breast pocket is a label, which we call a linen, which actually identifies this coat having been made by Colin Hammock, in parentheses CH, on the 30th of May in 1960 with Mr. Peck's name. So that same uh, identification is carried in every single Huntsman bespoke garment. So it can be identified to the order number, to the client and to the date in which it was made. And so you can go back to the books and actually kind of see that order, kind of how it was originally written down. Exactly, so we can go through the ledgers and not only see the order, but, but generally speaking, a swatch of the original cloth, which is what helped us to trace back the history of this particular cloth and have it reproduced for today's client. So Kirby, here's an example of a very traditional garment which has a, quite an interesting application in, in today's market. This is a very classic uh, cotton and silk smoking jacket, sometimes called a smoker, done in beautiful dark green velvet. Uh, and while this can be worn in a very traditional way with a Marcella shirt and a bow tie like this, younger men are buying this to wear on Saturday night downtown in Soho with a pair of jeans. So this is a true extension of, of our formal uh, array of, of garments ranging from full dress tails to morning suits to dinner suits which we call tuxedos in the United States but it is a great starting point in a conversation for someone who's looking for formal wear or maybe is not looking for anything but is looking for inspiration. Yeah. So this is an example of uh, kind of that modern you know contemporary element of kind of huntsman today is you know again it's a traditional piece but kind of interpreted in a contemporary way Absolutely. One gentleman who was a client of mine actually bought this to wear with an $1,800 pair of bespoke jeans. Yeah. And that's what he wears. He wears jeans with, with, no, with no socks. Yeah. And that's his look. He's not the traditional huntsman client of the 1920s. No, but he completely is someone who lives the huntsman lifestyle. Just another segment of it. Yeah. Great. So what else we have? Fascinating. Yeah. So Kirby, here we have another example of a garment that you'll speak about in greater detail with Ralph, but it represents the quintessential Huntsman silhouette. Okay. This is the one button coat with the high armhole, the longer skirt, mm -hmm. and represents everything uh, that Huntsman has shown for years, but this is done with a slightly narrower lapel, so it's totally appropriate for today's client. And ironically, this one has been um, executed in fresco, and fresco was first 
patented by Minnis in London in 1907, which is the year this building was built. So it is one of the earliest recorded cloths. It's made in many variations today, but it's an incredible cloth and it is good today as it was 111 years ago. And fresco is a great open weave. It's got a little bit of texture to it. It's, it's a Absolutely. hardier fabric. And it's made in different weights and it's also made in blends with mohair, which gives it an even more lustrous appearance and, and greater wearability. So this is probably as, as a single silhouette and as a cloth and a color, the most important suit we have yeah. in so, Huntsman, New York. So this is as kind of iconic and quintessentially Huntsman as it, as it gets. So when a new client calls and says, I've read about Huntsman for years and I don't understand Huntsman, but I want to, to understand that experience, this is, this is a first introduction to the Huntsman lifestyle and to the Huntsman look. Yeah, no, it's a great, it's a great Navy sports coat, right? So in this corner, Kirby, we have an example of one of our traditional Isla tweeds, okay. um, done in a very interesting sporty model with three open patch pockets with pinch pleats. But this is an Isla tweed, and it has been designed to represent a, a modern version of an original coat that was worn by Mr. Peck as well. Uh, but it's a very important uh, category for us, and for a gentleman who wants his first jacket uh, at Huntsman, typically they're going to be buying something that would be utilitarian like a blazer or there's something that would be representative of, of, of the tweed or perhaps the, the peck cashmere as well. Yeah, wow, this is an absolutely fantastic piece. You know, I love these pockets and the pleats. Uh, anything else kind of interesting, rare, or unique? Yes, yeah, so I'm going to take you to the, the other side of the world, literally, right now. So Kirby, one more garment to show you, and again, literally going to the other side of the world. This is the Silver Yak. Uh, this jacket actually is a base fit garment. It belongs to our owner and chairman, uh, Pierre Lagrange. Uh, but it's, it's a fantastic example of, of, a, of a luxury fiber that comes from a very, very humble background. The yak is a working animal and this entire project basically helps to preserve this animal in its natural habitat. But this ranks up with the likes of Viconia and, and baby cashmere and any of the other luxury fibers of the world. It's absolutely fantastic and this is its natural color. The, another interesting uh, feature in this is that it has all of the natural ingredients that the animal ha has in nature. So it's uh, naturally water resistant and wrinkle resistant. And it's not a technical fiber, it's a totally natural fiber, but it's, it's based on thousands of years of evolution. The animal actually can live in its, its native environment and the cloth actually uh, represents that. Yeah, because the yak is you know, a Himalayan cow, isn't it? I mean, it's a... Basically, uh, but, it, but it's, it's a work animal. You know, it, it performs a, a daily function, but it is, is produced a fleece which actually protects it. Um, so it's warm, you know, water resistant. But it's gossamer, so, be, so it actually has great thermoregulatory properties because it can, it can keep you warm when it needs to keep you warm and it, and it can regulate the temperature because the fiber is so fine, it helps to allow the body to, exp breathe. to breathe. It's an absolutely fantastic example of uh, modern technology with old, old world fibers. Well, Ed, thank you so much for uh, having me here at the, the New York Cutting Room of uh, Huntsman. Absolutely beautiful, beautiful place. And um, I guess anyone that's interested in, in reaching out and uh, maybe coming by, how, how can they get in touch with you? Well, they can contact us directly here uh, on our website. You'll see our telephone number. We have our email addresses. So whichever way someone would like to reach out, we'll be sure to get back to them as soon as possible. And you guys are here all the time? All the time, yeah. literally 24 seven. Yeah, well, thank you, Ed. It's thank been an you. absolute pleasure. Thank you yeah. so much. If you enjoyed this video, give us a thumbs up and please subscribe to our channel and turn on your notifications by clicking the bell to the right of the subscribe button so that you can learn whenever we release new videos. If you have any questions or comments about anything we discussed on this video, please ask them in the comments section below. And of course, please visit hangerproject.com where we have the largest, most comprehensive collection of luxury garment care and shoe care accessories in the world, as well as many other incredible products for the well-dressed. And while you are there, subscribe to our newsletter to receive notifications of new product launches, promotions, as well as a weekly digest of all the videos we publish here on our YouTube channel.